episode seven of House of the Dragon just landed. Got a chance to see it. It's called The Red Sewing, and let's talk about it right now. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant about movies, comic books, and television shows, as well as the occasional board game. I am your host, Frank Zanka. I am an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as a filmmaker. And yeah, I'd love to chat about House of the Dragon. Uh, we are looking at the last episode coming up next week. And I'm going to be sad to see uh, this series go. Uh, I, was, I look forward to it every week. Uh, but before we get into it, remember to give me a like, give me a thumbs up. And if you can subscribe, please do. I am trying to grow the channel. If you'd like to read anything that I've written, you can check out the link to my Amazon page in the description below. Uh, and also there'll be another, uh, be another link in there with uh, the information for our card game. Uh, Mark Spears, who does cover art for Marvel and DC, has done a classic Monsters slew of, uh, of art that we have now compiled into a card game. Uh, so you will be launching that uh, in April or April, August uh, 5th. So look for that. You can see the description below will also have the link to the Kickstarter where you can sign up and then as soon as we launch it'll give you a notification and you can take advantage of all of the uh, early bird specials and things to that effect uh, exciting stuff it's going to be awesome all right so let's jump into uh episode seven the red sewing uh, i would assume that they called it this because of the red wedding uh so i guess it has to do with blood and uh overall i really enjoyed this episode it was the lani Perestere. I assume he's French to some degree. Uh, I don't even know how to say his name for the most part. Uh, so he uh, he had visual effects uh, design for the television series Firefly and Battlestar Galactica. And he has been directing for a long time. He has directed some amazing stuff. I had to look this up after I saw it because he loves imagery and it was not lost on me. Uh, and we'll get into some of that imagery. Warrior, he directed, I think, eight episodes of Warrior, which is like my favorite show. Uh, if you guys have not seen Warrior, I have a review of Warrior. Uh, I'll put this up at the end as well. Uh, he directed numerous episodes of American Horror Story. Uh, he did The Witcher. I mean, he's he's just done a pile, a pile of stuff. Castle Rock, 911, uh, Queen of the South. I mean, you know, Scream Queens. He's thinking very visual, and uh, he did, oh yeah, he did the effects for Angel also, and Buffy, uh, and also Cinderella. Yeah, this guy's amazing. I would love to work with this guy. This guy sounds awesome. But also, uh, the general arc for this episode, I really enjoyed, because there was a lot of conflict going on. Uh, mostly internal. And when I say internal, I mean both inside the kingdom and internally to the characters themselves. We have the whole thing happening with Damon again, which I can't, I can, I can give a shit about that storyline. <laughs> However, we got introduced to, I mean, not introduced because the character was in a scene before, but it's the first time we really got to see the River King, the, the boy who's not really a man and is not really looked upon as a leader at this point. But boy, is he smart. I mean, that kid is smart. And he, uh, he comes off very pleasant, but in his head, he's manipulating all over the place. I really respect that kid. He even, he even uh, manipulates Damon, uh, which I thought was amazing. So he... Uh, he uh, orders everybody to come uh, to this meeting and they all show up because he says, look, you not only pledged loyalty to my house and to my father and now me, but also we pledged loyalty to the original king, which automatically 
makes us loyal to Rhaenyra. By default, Damon. And he says, even if we don't like the representative of that kingdom, Rhaenyra is a whole other thing, but, you know, we may have to just deal with this asshole. <laughs> and he says that right to Damon's face. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, we agree with that. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy that Damon has been sending around to do his dirty work, they called him a traitor. So he, so the king says, look, are you guys all good with uh, joining him uh, even if he shows his loyalty to us? And they're like, well, what do you got in mind? They're like, well, he's going to kill this guy. <laughs> and Damon doesn't even think twice. He just cuts that guy's head off. Even though he he must he obviously knows he's being used to do it, and the fact that he's been ordered to do it and did it, that shows you something. And that showed all of the other uh, fiefdoms, uh, all the other leaders of all those fiefdoms, that the kid was the was the man in charge. And shit, I pledge fealty to that kid. Damn, he was he's genius, and he made the friggin' king snap to to his orders too. Not a whole lot of respect for Damon, but they're like, we don't need to respect this guy. We just need to respect the queen. And they all agreed. So it looks like Damon got his army. But speaking of army, now we have Rhaenyra, who is getting pushback from everyone, including her own son, about what we're going to do with all of this lineage. Everybody disagrees with her, but she's like, look, I have a war to win. We have courageous people that are willing to put their lives on the line. Forget the fact that Dragon Riders makes us special. That's not the point here. And her son couldn't see that because I guess he's a bastard also, which is why he has dark hair. Rhaenyra's just not having it. She's like, sorry. So she goes off, even out all the dragon trainers and stuff like that, walk out. I was pretty surprised at that. They walk out. I'd have them all executed. <laughs> but uh, but they walk out and she's like, fuck it, go. I'm, uh, I'm doing my own shit over here. You don't like it either? Bye. <laughs> and again, she doesn't even know if this experiment is going to work. Uh, she knows it has worked because in the first scene, she has a standoff with, I don't remember the, the, the hand, I'm going to call him the hand, with the hand son, uh, the other king. She doesn't know if he's friend or foe. She sees him on Sea Smoke, and she's like, am I going to have to battle this or what? And he immediately takes a knee. And that I think that really surprised her. And she's like, all right, you're in. Come on, you're part of the group. <laughs> I don't think she also realized who he was. So she, he goes to the other brother, too, and the other brother's like, I'm a seaman. I'm not dealing with that. So they send the spies out to bring all these people back. But I really liked him. You know, I guess they lost a child, and he's kind of suicidal by the end. He saves the girl, but he's just like, come on, just do it, man. Get it over with. <laughs> and I guess that got the respect of Bronze Fury. That was uh, what they called it. And sure enough, he was the second guy. So now uh, he ends up just flying out, not even being able to get I didn't realize that the two kingdoms were that close. But it also looked like the other kingdom was on an island. I didn't know how that worked because those people walked there. I didn't see them take a boat or anything. But anyway, he's just flying over the other kingdom. And Aemon gets on his on his dragon, heads over. We see, I finally see some fear in him. Where he's like, no, no, retreat, retreat. Because he, he saw Rhaenyra, which was now queen of the dragons. And all those dragons just lined up on the coast. And I think that they only have his dragon and that's it because didn't he kill the other dragon that uh, Aegon was on? I believe so. So, uh, and Aegon is barely be able to walk. They, they showed him a little bit, but that was it. But I really like this whole arc. I really like them bringing in these other guys that are not of, uh, they called, uh, the uh, Jaceras just, just called him the mongrels. This is going to be extremely interesting. I don't know what they're going to do with the last episode. Because this is just still going. Uh, and I don't know how close it is to the books. Uh, but I like a lot of what's going on. But let's talk about the imagery. 
because we have uh, Allison. She just takes off. She's done. She doesn't know where she is in that lineage anymore. Or in, I mean, she's lost complete control. She, she's gone. Uh, she was basically exiled. So she walks into this whole field of grass that was very uh, like uh, the end of um, Gladiator, where he's putting his hand down on the, the wheat and stuff like that. It was very reminiscent of that. And then she goes into uh, the lake to take a swim. I really thought we were going to finally see Libby Cook naked, but that didn't happen. Damn it. And uh, so she takes a swim, and we get to see we get to see this imagery of her hair in the water. I thought it was really amazing. And then we have, uh, you know, her just floating up there, looking at the sky. There was a lot of really good imagery in there. And then the other scene that had a ton of imagery was the scene with Damon and the original king, his his brother, where he's holding the crown. And what I saw the the behind the scenes, they said that the actor wanted to be asked to be in the makeup for that scene. So that was a choice, not by the director, but by the actor. And see, that's what I keep telling everybody, that film is a collaborative effort because you never know who's going to bring something to that scene or to a scene. So you've got to listen to everybody. Uh, and that's why these writer, producer, director, everything else, that just want to do it their own way, I, I strongly urge against that because you're limiting the potential of what your project can be. And here's a perfect example where the actor made a choice that the director did not make. The director agreed, of course, but without the actor coming to him and saying, we should do it this way, it wouldn't have been done that way. And I think it was a lot more powerful that way where he was missing an eye and all that stuff. And he says, do you still run the crown after he gives that speech? And we don't get to hear an answer. But I thought the imagery on that was very, very good. Uh, so I really like this director. I think he he knows how to not only do the action, how to create the intensity, but also to give these beautiful images when he needs to uh, and or when the, the script and story applies. And I really, really respect that. So I thought this was overall a very, very good episode. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought, uh, and uh, and yeah, let me know. I mean, we don't know how it's going to wrap up, but I guess it's really not going to wrap up, so uh, I guess we'll have to be waiting on a cliffhanger. <laughs> all right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I greatly appreciate it. Remember, if you'd like to read anything that I've written, uh, it's in the description below. Remember to give me that like, give me that thumbs up, and if you can subscribe, please do. Ring that bell, ding, ding. And also, the description below will also have the link for Myth Lords, uh, Classic Monsters, where you get to play as a variety of monsters. There's also a Dark Oz expansion, where you can play as the characters of Oz as well. And it's got a little bit of a dark uh, horror undertone as well. But anyway, the link below will have you sign up, and uh, it'll notify you when we finally launch. Check out some of the videos on the way out, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great week, guys. Thank you.